Oh yeah. Then hello everyone and welcome to the shuttle cast. My name is Sal. And I'm Nathan. And welcome to the shuttle cast episode 20 fun. My god. Ayo, it's uh it's election night, so we're gonna talk about movies and comic books and video games instead of thinking about uh the future of the country, because uh this is way better to think about. This is way nicer. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I have a I have a story to start us off. Oh boy. I have it's it's my ongoing tale of Sal tries to get into comic books and the universe does everything it can to say no, you shouldn't do that. That is Oh no. That is a sin. Um so I think I've I've talked about it before that I but I'll recap a little bit that I have like a few months ago, I was really like, I'm going to get into comics, like new comics that are coming out right now. So I went to my local comic shop and I picked up a comic called Helen of Windhorn, issue number one. And I read it and I was like, this is dope. And so I looked up when the second issue comes out. I went there like the afternoon of the day it came out and they were sold out. And I was like, motherfucker. And then they were like, we're not getting any more in. And I thought like that kind of burned me for a while and I stopped trying to get into comics for a bit until recently with the whole like absolute DC stuff. So I had a journey last Wednesday where I, you know, it was the second printing of absolute Batman and also of the DC all in special that sets up the whole absolute universe. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get these comic books today because they come out today. So I went to my local comic book shop and I was there at open. There was no line and I was the first customer in the building. So I walk in, I go up to the, the, the guy at the counter and I'm like, do you have absolute bad man number one? And he says, no, we're already sold out. Oh my God. Nathan, how... Can you tell me how they were sold out when I was the first fucking person in the in a uh, first customer to exist in that retail space? I'll tell you exactly how, uh, because I I there was a moment when I was living up in Bellingham where I almost became one of these people. I'm assuming this is what happened, but certain uh, local comic book shops will. Uh, basically let you set up an account and do a pre-order there. Um, the one I went to, it was very informal. Like, there wasn't, like, an online application I filled out. It was literally me telling them my information there. Um, but they'll, uh, yeah, they'll they'll let you know as soon as the comic series you're subscribed to is, uh, is arrived, and they will hold... <laughs> your your issue for that week for for a week I believe so I assume that's what happened there. Nathan, by unless, God, unless you already is, know the answer, that is exactly what happened. Yeah. So I talked to the guy and he said, "Sorry, we're already sold out." And I'm like, "Okay." And I walk away and I'm like, "What in the sweet good goddamn just happened to me? I, I'm here at open. It's eleven oh one." The store has been open for 60 seconds. How can you be sold out? So I'm shopping around and I do find they have a copy of DC all in number one. So I just asked for bad mix. Um, that's the one I cared about. Yeah. yeah. So I grabbed that. I grabbed uh, a couple things. I grabbed, um, there was some Avengers versus Ultraman comic. I picked up, I grabbed, uh, a wonder woman outlaw by Tom King, which is the start of the new wonder woman run as like a trade. Mm. So it's like the first six or seven issues which is really good so far. Um, and then while I'm checking out, I'm like, hey, so, you know, I came here, I'd open. Uh, how are you guys already sold out? <laughs> and and then he tells me, like, oh, well, people pre-ordered it. And I was like, yeah. uh-huh. Okay. H how did they pre-order it? <laughs> and, they, and then he's like, they signed up online on the portal. And I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> and I left. And uh, it's funny because like, I've been going to this comic shop like for a, for a while. Like, he, like The guy knows me. Sure. Like, he knows what I'm reading. 
like he knows I'm reading the uh, Something is Killing the Children series. Kind of the only reason why I go there often is to pick up a new volume of that because I'm not up uh-huh. to date on the actual single issues. And uh, I pick up my Blade Runner comics there. Like, he knows, like, what I like. And it's weird that, like, you know, the week before I went there asking for Batman. He's like, we're sold out. And I was like, cool, okay. And, like, I don't know, man. Like, he didn't, like, think to tell me, like, then that there was a super secret club I could be a part of to get, like, this information. And then I went on the website. And I'm like, cool, okay, I'll sign up for this thing. Um... There's no sign up. What? In the FAQ, there's a little thing saying like you can pre-order, but that's it. It just says it's like a thing that's possible, but there's nothing on there that actually like indicates you can do such a thing. Okay. And even yeah. tell when I was in person, he told me like, but you have to you can sign up for our pre-order, be part of the, it's called the pull list. I've learned is the is the industry term is a pull list. Oh. Um and he's like, you have to be, it's a free service. And I'm like, okay. And you have to be, be subscribed to five monthly series. At least. Okay. And I'm like, weird. So it's a free service where I get to sign up and you'll grab my five monthly comics and just have it ready for me. I'm, couldn't you just like sell it in your fucking store? It kind well, of well, it kind of just sounds like you just have a bunch of friends on this secret pre-order list that you just sell your comics to. Yes. Um well and here's and here's the th- you know it's it's uh it's sales 101 because all of I guarantee you at least I'd say 80% probably more of the people that are subscribed for a particular thing once they get the notice they go in they grab that comic they fuck off. But you and the and the other dumb casuals that they can milk um, will come in and be like, "Hey, can I get this?" They'll say no, and you'll wander around and you'll grab two or three other things that you wouldn't have got otherwise. So, you know, they you know they're they're they're, tr- they're trying to milk you. The comic industry is dying. It is dying, and I feel like part of it is because like if you're not a part of the secret club, um, yes. they tell you to go fuck yourself, which is very annoying as someone who wants to like read and enjoy comics and does when I actually get my fucking hands on them. Um, Cause it's also funny about this is that the week before I know this is the week before last week, time is a construct. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I saw on his, on, on the back of the counter, there was a stack of comics. It was the, and it was the AEW origins comics. <laughs> Which is part of why how I knew about the Absolute series in the first place was AEW was talking about it. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, because I saw it, I was like, hey, can I buy one of those? And he was like, oh no, they're going to be available next week. And I'm like, hmm, you get comics at least a week before they come out. That's enough time to all your friends on your pre list to just come through and <laughs> yeah, buy up all their shit. So I was pretty bummed, man. I was pretty fucking annoyed because, like, I did the due diligence of being there day one at open and it's still sold out. But the story has a happy ending. Oh, good. I went to another comic book shop. And they fucking had it. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, was, I saw that you had it. So yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to somehow. another shop. And they must not do the fucking super secret friends list. So I got Batman number one. I read it. And I'm here to say I loved it. I'm glad. It's uh, yeah, it's a different version of like the story of Bruce Wayne and the Batman and everything. Bruce Wayne's now like a city engineer instead of being a rich boy. Um, Alfred Pennyworth is like a super secret agent. And he's kind of like keeping an eye on, on Batman and like hunting him a bit. Um it just really flips like a lot of the typical tropes of Batman kind of on its head. And then spoilers, the end of the first issue alludes to the Joker being rich. Oh, OK. OK. So now we have a dis like a, like a disenfranchised broke Batman and a rich, crazy Joker. Classic role reversal. So it's good. It's, it's good so far. He has a good moveset. I enjoy his um, his chest acts. 
I like his um his his ear knives. It's good. I cannot wait to read more. I recommend. I mean, you can't buy it physically because uh, you're not on the secret list. But of course, you know, Kindle has it. Well, not, hmm? yeah, well you know, next time you if <laughs> if you go into that that first comic book shop again, or if you just make that other one your go to from now on, but. You know, just just slip the guy a fifty at that place, and you'll you'll get on the VIP list. Yeah, apparently, you know yeah. Jesus Christ, I was like, when he was telling me this, I'm just like, brother, you've never once mentioned mentioned this to me in all of the times I've been here. <laughs> you've never been like, hey, hey, man, do you, you know? I I talked to him a bunch where I'm like, I, there's been multiple times where I walk in and go, do you have this? And he says no. And I'm like, did you ever think maybe to offer me the secret friends list, or am I just not in the cool club yet? Well, see, exactly, because you're going up to him and asking. All these other dorks are going online and just pre-ordering, and then somehow you know, and trying not to make eye contact and you know all that stuff. Yeah, you're, I'm actually like talking to people, wonder what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're too, you're too much it. of a you're too much of a normie. This guy's gonna be like, is this guy a fed? <laughs> is, is he gonna is he gonna weed out that i get my comics a week early whoa this guy came in the day their comic came out and asked for the comic this guy's a narc yeah you wearing a wire <laughs> uh but thankfully uh tomorrow so when you're listening to this um superman absolute superman number one comes out so i will be That's going cool. to my new comic shop <laughs> <laughs> and i will be purchasing my comic in the store like god intended not online not making eye contact because i'm a fucking bitch i'm gonna be talking to a human being making a human connection with another human talking about com and i bought a lot of stuff at that comic shop once i saw they had batman i, or I was like okay we're getting this we're getting this i got <laughs> i got i got my husband like a 30 dollar mothra plushie because like no one ever sells Mothra stuff. It's always, like the other comic shop always sells like Batman, not Batman, but um, uh, Godzilla and Mechagodzilla and Ghidorah, and they never sell Mothra. I want this other comic book shop. They had a Mothra thing, and I was like, I've been wanting one of these for a long time. Moth Mothra is a bit of the redheaded stepchild, and I don't know why. I guess because a giant moth is silly, and you know you don't you don't realize the destructive capabilities. Yeah, but she's so but... cool. She's great. And she's got little fairy people or whatever. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're tiny. Sometimes they aren't. <laughs> it depends. You know, what, whatever the fuck. <laughs> whatever. But yeah, so I, uh, I'm supporting this new comic book shop that also opens later, so I can like sleep in a little bit. There you go. See, and, yeah, best of both worlds. So it's good. Uh, so that's my comic story. That's my fucking rant. I'm. I was. I was. I was pissed the day it happened. I feel you. Because like I made a whole thing where I'm okay. You know, because I'm like. I want to go. It's going to be a whole adventure. It's like my husband who, like, you know, half cares. <laughs> I'm okay. We'll get but you. But it's supportive. Yeah. You know? And then we get there and it's like, sorry. Anyway, I'm, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. Hi, Nathan. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I, see, I actually, I have a, I have a small comic thing <gasps> uh, as well to, oh to, to hop on. So, uh, so I am, uh, let's see. I have, uh, I guess I'm not as far as I thought. I've I've got four more of the Berserk Deluxe volumes to get through, which are three volumes apiece, which I read half per day. So yeah, someone can do the math and let me know when I'm done. Damn, I almost uh, was about to grab Prince Valiant, but okay. No, um, no, no. I I feel you. Uh, that's gonna go on the back burner while I can uh, actually hopefully build up a collection to read through, <laughs> so I don't just burn through it and then yeah, wait. Yeah. Um, but I decided, due to uh, a, a recent um, experience I had this past week, oh uh, that the next thing I'm going to do after Berserk is go through Watchmen, because uh, oh. I I've got the I've got the ultimate edition of of that. Yes. Uh, it's been a while since I've read through it, um, and I know that, um, you know, uh, from what I've heard, while not great, the um, the expanded universe of Watchmen is still relatively small, um, so you know I thought maybe I'd I'd take a look at uh, at the uh, before Watchmen and uh, uh, the um, the the Doomsday Clock. I don't know if you've heard of of that. One. I have um, recently heard of these things. Yeah, because so, it's, it was pretty. It wasn't it like a thing where. Uh, 
uh, Doctor Manhattan kind of fucked the New Fifty Two. Yeah, I, yeah. My understanding is that it's possible that he is the creator of the New Fifty Two universe, and that's why it's dog shit compared to whatever the previous era, the Golden Era, or whatever yeah. the fuck. Um, so it's like him and and Superman colliding, and so I'm like, all right, that sounds dumb but fun. Um, and I know there's the, I don't know, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but there's the 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 2019 miniseries on HBO. Um, that oh, didn't yeah. look good. Uh, and there's apparently also a uh, Rorschach comic, which is. Uh, sequel to Watchmen and is possibly loosely connected to the miniseries. I, I don't know, a hundred percent. See, I do want to watch or read the Rorschach comic because it's by Tom King. Yes. Um, who is currently doing the Wonder Woman series? That is the current series that I'm reading. Mm. Uh, not absolute, but he's doing the like actual like standard Wonder Woman. Okay. And okay. he's the one who wrote Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, I've I've heard good things about Tom King and Yeah, so I do um, technically trust him. Yeah. So I, I mean, listen, none of them are going to be Alan Moore. Yeah. I I'm not expecting anything on the level of actual Watchmen, but, but... hearing Tom King does a Watchmen sequel, I'm like there is hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It might not be a lot of it, but it's there. Precisely. Yeah, I've, from what I've heard, the complaints have been that it's like that it's a slow plotting detective story, and I'm like, oh, you oh. like what it should be. Oh, so it's okay. Rorschach. Oh, that sounds awesome. I you know my dick's even harder. Yeah, I think I I don't know. You must you must have come from the before Watchmen fan base and. <laughs> been expecting some schlock that's but. it's very funny that's a, that's that's a complaint <laughs> i love yeah, that no. actually that's S fucking awesome i'm like loving it the yeah. more i'm thinking about it yeah, oh so, man <laughs> it's yeah. it's weird this rorschach comic i read was like a detective story <laughs> yeah what the fuck do you think it's doing where's my, where's my fucking comics oh my god i can't believe detective comics would make a detective comic that's fucking crazy dude holy shit what the fuck <laughs> detectives in my detective comics anyway i i, I put rorschach over you he's like watching you he's watching the watchman thank you there we go. uh well i guess uh, i i guess you know I, I i set it up so i'll, I'll segue myself um yes 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 do it so, um, please. <laughs> so, so earlier this year, yes. um, and subsequently later this year, mm -hmm. there is a two part animated oh, adaptation of this. Watchmen. Um, this is not what I wanted. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not what I wanted either. Uh, uh, I watched, I watched part one and, um, it might have been like one of the most miserable experiences of my life. Yes, dude. Um, What's it called again? And I will. Uh, it's Watchmen, Chapter One. What the fuck? Chapter oh yeah, I, sorry, I heard about this. Will. Yeah. Um, you no, know, it was bad. Oh, it sucked. It no. was. It was fucking worse. Yeah. No. 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 They. Um. You know, they used that. They went for the old cheap uh cg 3d model with a cheap layer of cell shading on it so that if you like squint and are drunk and high you might mistake it for traditional 2d animation um yeah. so it looks awful uh it's like way too clean all of the models are like weightless there's there's one shot where um i think it's when hooded justice is fighting off uh the comedian and like he punches him and i was like oh that just looked like fist.png being slid across the screen to you know come up against face.png it was it was awful um and uh and all of the voice acting fucking sucked pretty much but it has uh, an all-star class i know well well here's here's my my one caveat is uh troy baker is fucking great as ozymandias but that's because it's troy baker so i expected nothing less um but like I was, I was really, I was, I was kind of excited when I saw who was voicing Rorschach. Um, 
because I, I I've heard him in TV stuff, uh, and he's you know he's got he's got like a very he, he's got like a slightly gravelly voice, and he's got like you know I, I like how he talks and other things, but in this I I think I wrote in my letterbox it sounds like he's like saying his line he's like reading his lines as fast as he can so he can get out of there and he's like while cramming a bagel down his throat because he missed lunch and like oh it's just awful and he's and he's like trying to do a Jackie Earl Haley impression so it's way too gravelly and ugh, I, I saw that just... in your review and I thought that was fucking hilarious thank you thank you that was one of my best reviews that was, that was, that was really good that was really good Thank you. I'm trying to see who this um, is. Everyone voiced like 17 characters. I know. Um, but yeah. And it was so dog shit that it made me revisit Zack Snyder's Watchmen, which I already fucking love. Um, oh no, Titus Welliver. Oh, man, he is really good. What the fuck? He is really good. What I was happened, like, he'll, man? Do, he'll, he'll do fucking great. Fuck, dude. Then, you were in you were uh, Argo. What happened? Yeah. He, uh, I, he did not give a fuck or... They didn't really have voice direction. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what happened. I will say I was... don't love this animation style. It doesn't appeal to me at all. It looks like um, it looks really cheap and bad. Yes. But the saddest part, yes. I think, for me in hearing that you did not like it is the fact that it's written by J. Michael Straczynski, who wrote Babylon 5. Oh, man. And that makes me actually sad. I mean, you know, it, I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's worth, they, I'm pretty sure they jam every single line of dialogue that could possibly be in the Watchmen comic into it, so. And it's just adapting, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it is, like, and it's so weird because, like when I went to watch the the Snyder movie, I was like, "Man, it's so crazy how he also is able to do like a shot for shot adaptation in certain scenes." But there is like it actually feels like there's a vision and like a style to it yeah. in his shots. Whereas like like there's so many shots, and I know this is again, I know this is how it is in the comic because that's all they worked off of. But there's so many shots where it'll be an overhead shot of two characters talking. And it'll be, um, it'll be moving up so that you see more and more of the city and their surroundings. Yeah. They have that shot like two or three times. And in the comic, when it does it, um, and in Snyder's movie, you see like more and more of like the the dirty, gritty, disgusting, rundown city that's like smoke filled and it's got blimps in the air and everything. And when it does it in this animated version, it's like. Yeah, there's a lot of CG buildings. This sure is clean. Yeah, it looks it's like, very clean. Yeah. Yeah, it's um it's ass. It's uh it's pretty bad. Uh I guess, you know, I guess I'm going to watch uh part 2 you even though I don't someone. want to. Yeah, this Listen, is, this is, uh, this is know, garbage. It was it sucks because when I went back and watched Snyder's version, I was like, "Man, because I, I do love it. The only thing is I do wish that they had done the comic ending. Like, it, it, the, the ending for the movie still works. It's nice and streamlined. Um, but man, I just wanted the, the giant telepathic squid. And, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I wish that Ozymandias felt like Ozymandias. Um, yeah. I don't know why he starts speaking with a German accent and acting like a melodramatic villain at the end <laughs> when he says he's not a comic book villain. Yeah. Um, you know, like all of that's still really good, but I was like, man, if that had been like the comic, this would be perfect. So. Do you think Snyder regrets yeah. not, uh, not doing it? No, I think, I think he's happy that he got to do the, the bat nipples his own way. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, and I guess i i i can only assume it somehow inspired him to do man of steel steel and his snyder verse so uh i think he's satisfied i hope he's happy i just want the best for him I, absolutely 100 percent. um that's insane though i thought you were talking about another comic book thing that you've been going through recently this week did i do another comic book Oh, oh, oh! Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, I guess uh -huh. I guess 
Um, I don't have. Uh, uh. So did you watch? Okay, so you watched Joker. I did. Did you watch just the first one or both? No, uh, I did. I did a. I did a back to back of of Joker and Joker Faliador. So we can finally talk about it with spoilers because it's been like weeks. Yeah, and no one watched it anyway, except for us. Let's go. That's that's right. This is a very DC centric episode. I love it. It, it. Listen, we. I. I guess. I guess we inadvertently created a stopgap on Cape shit when we tried to limit it. So, you know, it's it's caught up. It's caught up, and it, it, yeah, it doesn't help that we've been doing Cape shit recently. So you that, finally that watched. Is... So you have a really unique pr- perspective because I think I have. Um, I think I have the intended viewing where you're not supposed to rewatch it because you're supposed to just have the the myth of the Joker. Um, because the opening of Joker Folly Adu recontextualizes the ending of the Joker. Yes. Um, and then it's sort of like the the media and social fallout of the events of Joker, though not necessarily like what it is, I feel like. Let me get, yeah. your, let me get your thoughts on it, because I kind of have my whole spiel the other day, or the other week. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I... I, I, I definitely... I, I definitely see that there's a lot of meta commentary on that is you know contextualized into the movie um where it is addressing people's reactions to joker um you know so you have in the film you have people who have been inspired people who have been repulsed people who have been confused people who have been uh, justifying or demonizing his actions. They have all of these elements because all of these elements were raised and there was controversies or whatever for some reason for Joker back in 2019. I don't... Um, I remember, like, as it was happening, I was like, why? And then yeah, I, and I, I remember there was, like, all these things where it's like, oh, someone's gonna shoot up showings of the Joker, and then I saw it and I was like, this is, like, a fine movie. <laughs> yeah, because it, it all started with that, where it's like... Because I think it was coming out on, like, the 11th anniversary of Dark Knight or something like that. And so everyone was like, we got to keep an eye on this theater because there was there were, there was a, there was a shooting at, at one of the Dark Knight showings of people. Like, the joke happened. Literally oh nothing oh happened. God, and everyone was like, well, it's still controversial that they made it. And I'm like, what, what do you want? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's so, so um, not. It's so funny. It's such a nothing movie. I mean, not a nothing movie, but like, it's not the movie that people said it was. And I feel like that's what Joker Two is about. <laughs> so I think yes. for us, like, I saw a really good Letterbox review where someone said that Joker Two is clearly for the creatives because, yeah. like, we're getting like what's being said here. Where I think it's like the the average person who went and saw the Joker and was like, this is such an amazing, impactful movie. Saw Joker 2 and was like, what the fuck? Why'd you call me stupid? Even though the the movie, that's like part of the movie is like Joker rejecting his fans and the fans turning on Joker. And that's literally what's happening with the movie. Yeah, because, it, you know, it it is this weird thing. Um where I think people who are, you know, a lot of people who were very excited for Joker 2, um, you know, they they saw the first Joker as this, you know, dark and creative reimagining of the comic book character. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think... I, I think that might have been the original intention, even. But by the time we get to the actual movie, that's not what it is. Yeah. Like, you know, Arthur is a, a middle-aged man, while Bruce Wayne is a kid. They're not gonna duke it out. That's yes. not where this story is going. Um. So I feel like, and and. And let me, I, I will also say, 
that this feels consistent having watched uh, Todd Phillips's Hangover trilogy. Um, the only person who's done both. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, I will say that it, it's it's now repetition. We'll see if he does another franchise and it happens again. But he he has done this for for two of his series, where he'll start off with his his banger film, and then he'll do the follow up of where he kind of deconstructs his own work, and he goes, no, 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 no. Listen, really. Really, I really wasn't glorifying this. I hope you understand. And he's using his movie to say that. Like, it's not him giving interviews and giving his insights. He's like, no, 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 no. How can I, how can I tell that movie one was not supposed to be some glamorous event? Yeah. Let me make movie two this really dour, like, doubling down and being more clear with my message. Um, and then, in, you know, for Hangover, he gets a fucking a third movie to, to triple down on that. Um <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it, it it's very interesting. So, um, so overall, I and the thing is, it's it not is... even. Oh, sorry, you were still talking. I apologize. Oh no, no, please. And even with what it is, it's still not like a perfect. Um, um, that message is not perfectly delivered. No. Um, it's it's still muddled in how it's delivered. I feel like, um, his relationship with Lee was was not well highlighted. No. Um there w- I think there was like more to say there but they didn't. <laughs> well, that's the weird thing. Um so cuz cuz I I decided to actually look this up uh when I was writing my letterbox review, but uh uh f- do means uh madness of two. Yeah. Or uh, a, a shared madness, delusion. Yeah. yeah. And so I was kind of like, my assumption is that the shared madness is between Arthur and Lee, but they don't, but it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like they are on the same page with their fantasies. No, because I feel like she um, very much knows what this is. Yes, exactly. It's not a delusion. Um, she like clearly is, this is all orchestrated. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, it was funny. Joe actually responded. And he was saying that it could be another meta thing where the shared madness is between the audience and Lee that uh... has this, you know, idolization of Joker. Um, yeah. And so this movie is all about dispelling it. That could be. That could know? be. That's clever. Um, but yeah. Uh, so. Um, I I liked the character arc that Arthur went on. Um, yeah, I thought was, that was a good follow up. Yeah, it was very atypical. I mean, I mean, it's a it's a it's a movie where you're following a bad person. Yes, it's not going to have a very heroic, satisfying ending when you get to the end of the story because, like, he should get his comeuppance. You know. Yes, exactly. Um, because the whole movie is going no he killed five people six uh he wasn't justified in doing that um you know they they um they bring in his his friend that he spared and he's like i'm traumatized for life by what you've done yeah and it's like oh i guess that wasn't a scene of him being a good person and it's like fuck no <laughs> <laughs> mr puddles hot um, uh, yeah, I mean it's true. It's I feel like people where I saw Joker one was like, oh yeah, he he didn't kill puddles, and it's like, yeah, but like <laughs> he's never gonna be the same ever again. He he brutally murdered a man in front of him, and then like lunged out at him as he was trying to leave, and then laughed it off. That 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 man's got PTSD forever. Like yeah. And this is like the the eighties. He does not have the health care for this. No. It's and a, you know, and and I, mm. I and I love the the reversal we get, where like in the in the first movie, when he lets him go, Arthur's like, "You were the only one that was nice to me." And then we get to the second movie where he's up on the stands talking about how like his life is ruined from this, and he's like, "You were the only one who didn't laugh at me." Like, I I considered you a friend. And I was like, "Oh fuck." Yeah. 
Uh... That said, I, I, you know, uh, I'll, 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 you know, on behalf of the critics, uh, I also didn't really like the music numbers. Uh, I saw the points. Uh, I think they went on I for don't... too long. For I think they went on for most too long. Of the time. Yeah, I... especially the one where he's on the phone. I'm like, okay. Yes. Um. I. I yeah. I'm. I'm all done. Listen, Lady Gaga is a great singer. You know, always a pleasure. Um, <laughs> uh walking phoenix does not um he no. was able to muddle his way through yeah i mean some of, the some, some of it worked because of how just like raw he was and yeah it's like sometimes like there's like some like indie bands or like garage bands where it's like you're not good but your yeah. passion for the words you're singing make the song enjoyable because i could feel it so yeah i kind of was... felt that for some of arthur's songs in this yeah, I mean, like, his bad singing made more sense than, like, uh, the bad singing in the Les Mis movie, because they were like, oh, we're doing it live, so it's authentic. Fuck. It's like, but your whole thing is, oh, fuck, whatever. Um, and I'm Java. Oh, shit. Russell Crowe, do you know how to sing? No. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, um, oh, shit. Okay, uh, next. You know, <laughs> and to be fair, I guess there, like, weirdly enough, there is a payoff to the singing at the end where, you know, he's he's trying to just be real with Lee and she's still in the delusion. And he's like, please, I don't want to sing anymore. And she's just singing at him. And it's like, oh, God. But yeah. at the same time, again, I, I didn't need a half hour of singing before that. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think it is, I think the more I think about the Joker, too. The more I like it, but the more I am, I am still met with like, man, I wish there was like, I wish it was done better. But I think I appreciate the balls of like taking your hit movie and being like, fuck you for liking it so much. <laughs> you know, uh, and, 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 and empathizing with awesome. the character who's not like you're following the villain. It's not supposed to be like a yay good time. Um, yeah, I think what's funny about that is that after I saw Joker 2, one of my first thoughts were, man, people are not going to like Dude Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because Joker, yeah. for, for people who don't know much about the Dune books and are excited for Dune 3, I will give you this semi not very spoilery warning that if you didn't like Joker 2, buckle up for Dune Messiah. You might not also yeah. like that. <laughs> Dune Messiah. Imagine if, uh, imagine if Joker survived Joker two, and then he like went off into hiding, and then uh, Lee's baby was born, and then grew up, and was like, "I want to be Joker too, but I need to bring in my father to, uh, to <laughs> <laughs> inherit his legacy." And he just comes to like sixty year old Arthur Fleck. That's like, please, I just want to die. I think this is the no. wrong Dune you're talking about. <laughs> That's, no, I think that's I think that's, that's, that's oh shit that's no that, that's that's children. <laughs> I jumped I jumped ahead. You jumped over Messiah. <laughs> well, hey, that's fine. It's okay. I I mean, hey, I didn't see anything. <laughs> um, so I've been watching movies. Uh, mm. let me start with my movie I saw in theaters. Mm, okay, and we can do some ping ponging. Um, oh, yeah. actually, you know, you know what I'll do first. Because we mentioned Russell Crowe. <laughs> I will Wait, talk what? about a Russell Crowe movie I saw over the weekend. Not new in theaters. Okay. Um, right. I saw The Exorcism. Oh, fuck. I saw the other Russell Crowe Exorcist movie. Not The Pope's Exorcist. Not The Pope's Exorcist, which was actually what? kind of fun and good. I saw The Bad One, which is The Exorcism. Oh, no. Uh, oh, he, I'm so sorry to announce that this was not a good movie. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I mean, I had a good time because, uh, okay, so the premise is very interesting to me. Uh, it's essentially, so Russell Crowe is playing like an actor. And oh my god, I'm trying to color correct it. It's being so terrible with me. That's better. Um, Russell Crowe is playing an actor. So the film opens up and it's it's like a priest. It's a it's a guy reading his lines for a priest. And he's on a film set 
And after a while of him reading, and it's it's a shot in the dark because it's a fucking horror movie, and I and I mm. couldn't see shit. Eventually, I was like, "Is that fucking Nathan Petrelli?" And it was. <laughs> uh, like, Nathan Petrelli is in this movie <laughs> from Heroes. Hey. Um, <laughs> sorry, Russell Crowe in the thumbnail looks so terrible. <laughs> I can't oh, wait for oh, you good. to see this. It's so bad. Uh, <laughs> Sounds wonderful. <laughs> anyway, um, so he's reading his lines, and then like he's like clearly like practicing to be like like the priest at the end of an exorcist type movie, and then like some the lights turn off, and then like some creepy noises, and then like you know we find out that he died, and uh, then then Russell Crowe is an actor who is like a struggling like actor who hasn't been in stuff for a couple of years after his wife died or whatever, and he gets offered the role. To to take over the role of the extra of the priest in this movie, and so he accepts, and he has like an estranged relationship with his daughter, um, who like kind of hates him, and it's early on foreshadowed that she might be gay, and then later on it's confirmed that she's gay, um, and then she ends up like dating like someone, and like she ends up being a PA for the movie that they're shooting, and then ends up dating like this singer turned actor who's in the movie. It was an interesting little subplot. Um, hmm. she was okay. She was much better in, uh, she was in the Fear Street movies. The Fear Street oh, trilogy. The, from Netflix. Yeah, she was much better in that. Then I found out that apparently this movie was filmed like four years ago. Oh. This exorcism movie was shot four years ago and they stopped production because of COVID. And then four years later they came back, finished it up, and then shoved it out. Oh no. Um, so I imagine that this is what gave... Russell Crowe, the exorcist bug to then actually go and make so. a better exorcist movie. <laughs> Didn't he make is... another one too? Isn't I, I swear it's a trilogy. It's just two right now. Oh, okay. Man, right, I would right. know. Yeah, no, that, that's why I'm asking. I'm kind of upset because the Pope's exorcist is actually like a lot of fun in the like, um, in the sort of nun, the nun sort of way. Well, see, you uh, you did it the wrong way. It's the problem. Yeah. Because uh, the Pope's Exorcist is the newer one. That's so apparently. The, the, the series is ramping up. Well, the real way would have been to watch The Exorcism, The Pope's Exorcist, and then to watch WrestleMania 39. You're right. You're very That's right. That's probably the third one you're thinking about. I think, I think so. That might have been I, it. I, I do remember uh, Russell Crowe having a, a prominent presence on WrestleMania 39. So. Fucking hell. So anyway, so um, also in the movie is Sam Worthington, who's in like two scenes. Oh, no. Um, he's he's fine. It's, it, listen, again, my opinions of Sam Worthington are if he's a voice actor, he's fine. If he's there on set, he's too embarrassed to say his lines. Um, <laughs> that is what it is. Which is so bizarre. But yeah, it's it's a really it's but you, and you think like, OK, so. The, so the gimmick of the movie is we are filming in The Exorcist, essentially, yes. and the set is haunted. Mm. Um, and instead of like the little girl being the one, the subject of being the uh, of the the demon's obsession, it's the old guy who's going to play the priest. Unfortunately, okay. they do not uh, take advantage of this gimmick they have. It's oh, very man. depressing. They do not take advantage of this. It, most of this movie takes place in Russell Crowe's apartment. Um, they set up like this animatronic version of the girl who's supposed to be possessed and they never use it. Um, oh, man. I'm currently watching the trailer and there are shots that were not in the movie. Of course. <laughs> From the creator of the Scream franchise? Hold the fucking phone. What? Where's the fucking phone? Hold on a second. You can't just say that to me. <laughs> who th no, you can't just say those words like it. Who? None of the neither of the writers were in in involved in Scream. You can't just say that. Well, one of the producers. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, maybe that's really I threw money at I threw money at Scream and then I threw money at this. I bet if it's like one, of, it's like it's like one of the. Oh yeah, there's like eighteen producers. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, sure. From the create my ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> did, did we resurrect Wes Craven to make a shitty Exorcist movie? I don't think so. 
Any who's he what's that? Yeah, the most of the movie is set in like his apartment. Uh, there's some, and it's not really very creepy for most of the movie. And I feel like that the relationship that the daughter has with her potential girlfriend singer is not really well explored. And the scares aren't very good. And they have this up uh, this they have a, a consulting priest on set who has to like try to fight the the demon and offers himself up to the demon and it's and then Russell Crowe has to like recite like you know he's having a hard time remembering his lines of the whole movie. Like his character, not Russell Crowe. Probably Russell Crowe too. He might have been he might have been wasted. Probably. But then at the end he's able to like say it because now he has conviction in what he's saying and they can defeat the demon and uh it it man it sucked <laughs> it fucking sucked uh i had a great time <laughs> Bam. it's wild to see the movie like because you started you're like oh shit it's okay it's gonna it's it's on a film set oh okay oh russell crowe's not a real priest but like he was an altar boy when he was a kid and he was like you know sexually assaulted as a kid and there's this other priest character who's, who's a bit older so you think like oh is there gonna be a thing there no um, Adrian Passador dies way too early. Even the, like he dies awesome. and the opening credits happen and he's there and I'm like, dude, he's already dead. He's yeah. not, he's not in the movie anymore. He's gone. Made his money though. He did, and he got billed. So good yeah. for him, man. See, this this sounds this sounds like the the shittier, more generic version of uh, a show that Joe did. Uh, I hate Hamlet. I don't know. Do you see that one? Probably not. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, um, his, so basically, his, his shows are always in a city that's far away on a Saturday night when the buses are not working. That is that is fair. So I unfortunately um, miss most of them, which I'm sad about. That is that is fair. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the I hate Hamlet is a uh, about a down on his luck uh, TV actor who wants to be taken seriously but isn't very good. So he uh, is he's able to get the role of Hamlet, I think, like Shakespeare in the Park or some shit in like uh, Mad in like, uh, you know, uh, somewhere in New York. Um, and so he's like, oh, I don't really know Shakespeare, but whatever. Like, I'll give this. And then he gets haunted by the spirit of Lionel Barrymore, who is like, who <laughs> tries to train him in the way of melodramatic Shakespeare acting. Uh, it's fantastic. Man, that sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta see if he's got a recording of that. I would love that. Version of the exorcism. I would I, I could do that. There you go. Um so I'm also looking at more producer things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a little bit of a rabbit hole here. It said from the producers of Halloween and they mean the Rob Zombie one. <laughs> of course. Well of course. I'm like that's there's pretty. like there, there's now three different Halloweens, so yeah. a few of the you producers did, did did produce uh, Strange Darling, so I'll give them that. Well, yeah, but then they turned around and, and <laughs> funded the exorcism. That's so. true. I guess they are just don't give them too money. much credit. Yeah. Oh fuck! I, I'm I'm going through this, man. I'm still not seeing Scream anywhere. I'm like oh, I'm, sure. I'm running out of producers here, man. <laughs> I'm running out of producers. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Nope. I don't maybe think... mean, maybe, maybe they mean the creator of the Scream TV series. That's I uh, honest to God. That's what I'm expecting to happen. I'm ex I, I I'm expecting it. the Scream TV show to show up, which was good, but it's not what you would you know. It it is if you are doing it in bad faith. That's true. Oh. Here we go. One producer of Scream. <laughs> One producer. Kevin Williamson. Yeah. Oh, I think he's one of the, I think, one of the writers. One of the writers? Yes. Yeah. He's a producer on this one. Yep. There you have it. That's <laughs> it. Wow. <laughs> That's fucking funny. That's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucking shady because he's not even like he's a writer on this movie he just produced it well you know it's really that's bad so because funny. sorry for the rabbit hole guys i just that no, was no, killing me it, see if the, the great thing is that he divorced himself enough where it doesn't specify where it could say from 
uh, from Kevin Williamson, creator of Scream. That's true. Fucking and hell. so they're like, ah, fuck it. So, someone won't look too closely at this. And, but here I am, Kevin Williamson, you fuck. Nails after the wall. Gotcha, bitch. I came in for our five listeners to hate you forever. Well, you know, listen, sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta really focus in and uh uh observe to to uh you know come to your conclusions, much like they did in The Burbs. Yo uh, I will say that great don't. great things have small beginnings, David. Anyway, uh <clears throat> <laughs> So we both watched the Burbs. We did. You you said yours was a rewatch, right? After yes, a long time, a long like childhood. And I only did it because I saw yeah. you watch it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, the fucking yeah. Burbs!" And I was like, "Yes, dude." <laughs> yeah, I, I I watched it because uh, uh, Katie and I were watching through various horrors and horror comedies for for the month of October, and apparently that was one that she and her family really liked. I had never. Um, really that's cool yeah it was great it was it was good old-fashioned uh you know uh 80s 90s fun uh you know tom hanks being tom hanks yeah this was his, uh, like his first role where he was like a dad oh really yeah. this was this was the the shift this was the shift where he started and it was so this, yeah, this is the part of the, the verb is really funny it's like uh tom hanks is like a dad who's staying home for the weekend on a staycation and his wife carrie fisher is like honey can we just like leave the house and go to the fucking lake house or something i fucking hate it here and tom hanks like no me and my stupid uh neighbor friends are spying on my our new neighbors who might be serial killers and then, like, Carrie Fisher is the voice of reason. Like, I'm sure they're just, like, weird people who want to, like, not be bothered. Can we just please, like, look at me? I'm 90s Carrie Fisher. Why are you distracted? Yeah. And I'm seriously, why the fuck was he distracted? It's quite baffling. Jesus Christ. You know. it was like Though, a... to be fair, mm. he, he is distracted by, uh, uh, shit, I just saw his name. Uh, 90s uh, Bruce Dern of the fucking Hateful Eight. Yes. <laughs> great. Man, there's like a there's like a dress Carrie Fisher wears in this movie that is like, how did you leave the house? You idiots. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, Carrie Fisher's hot. Uh, but yeah, so the, so the plot is like Tom Hanks, his doofus neighbor friend, and Bruce Dern, who's like a, a war vet who lives across the street are like, your neighbors are probably killing people and burying them in the backyard. Um, and the whole movie, you're kind of like, and at first, you're like, maybe they are, but then pretty soon you're like, God, these guys are just, they're just weird people. Nothing bad's happening. Like, you're just being overdramatic about this. And this it escalates and escalates and escalates until, like, eventually they're, like, breaking into their house and digging up, like, their, their backyard and their basements. And they like hit a gas line and they blow up their neighbor's house. And Tom Hanks is like, "We're the weird ones. What's wrong with us? We're the bad guys." It's it's a very good full circle moment of you know just that extreme suburbia mindset of, "Oh my god, these people don't water their lawn or or make small talk <laughs> with the neighbors or, yes. or clean their house. Something's wrong. Something's wrong." Because like it's funny. There's like a very clear. Well, one of the funniest divides is that, like, not only is, like, the lawn very clearly, like, the neighbor's lawn is dead and then Tom Hanks' lawn is green, but even the bush, half of the bush is green and half of the bush is dead, which yeah. doesn't make sense. No. But it adds to the, it adds to the mania of the movie. The the imagery is, is perfect. Yes, it's a very funny look at, like, suburbia and um, what staying home and being normal does to you yeah you know you've 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 got the you got one of the kids from the goonies uh Corey Feldman, <laughs> yes dude his his whole thing is just bringing his friends over to watch his weird and he's it's... like no i swear this is the most entertaining thing in the world and he has a girl over she's like can you go inside and he's like no listen the neighbor just left the house watch this shit <laughs> and to his credit he's right <laughs> Yeah, no, he gets it. 
Um, yeah, there's like, a, like when he knows they're gonna like break into their house, he gets like all of his friends and he orders pizza and like booze and. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh man, it's there, it's glorious. There was a, a a moment in this movie where I was like, um, it's when the two trash guys come by to pick up the trash, and the neighbors like, no, no, th- there might be bodies in there. They're like rifling through the trash. Um, the two people who were working the trash, um, it was Dick Miller and Roberto Picardo. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh man, Dick Miller. That's right, he's in a. He's in small soldiers. Like that's kind yes. of my like defining like role for him, I'd say. Like where I, yeah, like, yeah. I see him like very clearly. Um Yeah. I think so is uh um Robert Picardo. He might also be in small soldiers. Oh, I don't know. I just I just know him from Voyager. Yeah. No, he is in small soldiers. And I thought that was funny because okay. I was like those, those guys are both in Small Soldiers. And then fucking Joe Dante, the director, did Small Soldiers. <laughs> there you go. You so, love to see it. I like. I was operating on levels unseen. That, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Listen, undiagnosed autism is a scary thing because it might be there or am I just crazy? Or is it just like, what is this? But I caught Listen, it. So, sometimes it gives you the Rain Man in that you need. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, anyway that was i was just like i was very proud of that where i was like oh yeah those two small soldiers and then like lo and behold yes yeah, same director anyway their their scene is fucking great too yes because they're just... rifling through the trash and one of them's just like listen they have a right to do it and like, once it hits the curb it's public property <laughs> <laughs> They're... And then throughout the movie, there's this giant yeah. fucking trash mound in the street. It's it's a it's 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 a fucking classic, dude. It's like if you want to watch like a like it's 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 horror adjacent. I want to call it a horror movie, but it's very no. much like. Do you want like the like the the lowest amount of sugar in your horror shake? This is it. We got yeah, you for sure. Um, speaking of horror movies. We're still on horror. Um, I watched so I'm I'm kind of like trying to catch up on like movies that came out this year. I feel you. Um, I have my like list of 2024 ranked, which I'm sure at the That's end of rough. the year we're gonna have a fun time with that. You should start doing that too. I know Joe and I are doing it, but you should maybe uh, potentially if you should. want to on Letterboxd. I'll I'll have to I'll have to I'll have to look into it. I don't know how many movies from this year specifically I've seen. I know because you're like I but... watched this 1932 French silent film. Uh... <laughs> exactly, yeah. And if I just ranked everything that I saw this year for the first time, that would be too much. No, no, no. Yeah, it's gotta be specifically came out this year. Okay. Because I want to okay. do a fun thing where at the end of the year, hopefully we can get Joe back for an episode where we can like all maybe like. We do a thing where everyone watches each other's top five and we do like a uh, like a word type show, maybe. OK, all right. Could be fun. We'll see. We'll but see. Uh, I'm trying to go through movies that came out this year. And so a I movie can. that came out earlier this year that I missed in theaters because it was one of those like. One show time for a week <laughs> and then it's gone. Yeah, blinking you miss it. Um, was called Oddity. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, who man, yeah, I remember when I saw the trailer for Oddity, I was like, brother, let's go. And then, it, yeah, then it was never, then I, I couldn't see it because it was it's gone like the next fucking day, which, uh, made me very sad, but I finally was able to watch it. Um, and I'm here to announce Oddity. It's fucking good. <laughs> So it's it's hard to talk about, but I will say that because I want people to kind of go in like with as little knowledge as possible, because I think that like going in and letting the movie happen to you is very, very important for this movie. Okay. Uh, but it does do a lot of like twists and turns um, that like I don't typically see in a lot of horror movies it and it legitim- legitimately did scare me at times, which for me is kind of hard to do. I'm I sure. I pretty much know all the tricks of the trade at this point. Um, yeah. And I'm not saying that this movie invents like all new tricks, but I will say that like they just know how what they're fucking doing. 
They know how to stage a scene. They know how to stage an environment to make for maximum like unease. Mm. And part of it, I will say, and I'll kind of give this away. Um, the thing you're seeing on screen slash that will be in the thumbnail is obviously creepy to look at. But part of the fun of this movie is that this this weird creature thing is visible for most of the movie. So when you don't see it, you're wondering, what's it doing right now? <laughs> Why can't I see it right now? What is happening to it at the moment? And that is a fun question to ask. Um, yeah, Oddity was, was fantastic. I thought it was really, really well done, well structured, well paced. It had a really interesting story with... with um, uh, some some pretty strong characters and, a, and an interesting mystery that I feel like the new ones to do its reveals because I think there was the big mystery I was like, oh, was it this person? And then literally that scene, like 10 seconds later, they're like, oh yeah, it's this person. I was like, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, but it was just really fucking well done and actually like, I think in my letterbox, I said that it, in the first 10 minutes, it gripped my heart and never let go. And that is like entirely true. The, the opening scene is like, masterfully shot and masterfully acted where you're like it's just, it's kind of a simple premise but it really like grips you makes you go it makes you feel uneasy in your skin um oh. it was very good and i'm sad that it played for like a day uh i wish it didn't because holy fuck and i think it's like also one of the like top rated horror movies of the year on like uh, Rotten Tomatoes, which is not like the best metric. It's uh, uh, it's a metric because <laughs> the because according to Rotten Tomatoes, the best horror movie of the year so far is Late Night with the Devil, um, which is a boil on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and number two is Oddity. So, I mean, they got that right. Well, hey, listen, to be fair, uh uh, it, I can assume that the movie surrounding the the instances of AI usage is, is still good. Uh, and you want to know what? It probably is. It's just a shame I'll never watch it. <laughs> uh, slight pivot. It's funny because oh, I, yeah, I, I think I just saw that in my in my trailer playlist. I might have added it, so maybe that you know. I will say I was really excited for this movie for a long time. Um, I mean, it starts David Dasmal Shalian. Sorry. And uh, I know I think it's produced. I don't think it's directed by, but I think it's produced by the guy who did Lake Mungo, which I will yes. say is a really fucking good movie. Mm. And he hasn't done much since Lake Mungo. So to see that he was like producing this, I was like, oh, I got to watch it. And I heard the premise and it was like, you know, a late night show, like talk show gets and that gets a ghost demon. And I was like, oh, cool. It's like a retro The Cleansing Hour. <laughs> Which, if you haven't yeah. seen The Cleansing Hour, is it's like a a movie about these like live streamers that do like exorcisms and yada yada on stream. And it's mostly it's it's a hoax. But then they get an actual possessed person. There you and go. Uh, it feeds off of the viewership. So it keeps oh, no. ratcheting it up. Oh, God. Um, what the fuck? I'm scared. So it says that we've been recording for 22 minutes and 44 seconds, and it's that's and it not right. And the number's not changing. Oh no! But it says we're recording. Okay. So we'll just keep going. Perhaps it is just behind in the display. Or I could stop it real quick. Uh, that, that's up to you. That you know. I'm gonna stop it real quick. Okay, false alarm. Everything's fine. It was recording the whole time. <laughs> hey. It's just the number just stopped at 22 minutes. That's, um, uh, huh. And I remember that because I'd say about half an hour ago, I was like, "Oh man, we're only 22 minutes in," and then I just checked again, and I was like, "Uh." <laughs> that's not right <laughs> um but anyway yes i was really hyper late with the devil but uh it's sad that it turned out to use ai which is i mean obviously i mean obviously because people don't think it's a bad thing which is crazy um 
I know I've spiel about it before, but it essentially just takes images off the internet and puts into an algorithm that then spits an image back out at you using all those images in like a weird like collage essentially. And then people are taking that and making money off of it. So it's sort of like, you know, if you use copyrighted material, you have to pay for it. But they're not, because how can you track who is it's stealing from? Which is kind of the problem, right? Because if like you had an AI algorithm that made images that like could tell you all the artists it used, and then you could like, I don't know, they get like a fee if you use it in like a movie or whatever. That'd be one thing. Um, but this is like, there's nothing. So you basically just like, let's say you like an artist. Like, let's say you like, I don't know, for example, Vincent Van Gogh. And you just throw all Van Gogh stuff into an AI. You say, make me a Van Gogh painting. And then it does. And it's like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> like you're just taking his stuff and shifting it around with the new prompts you're adding. So it's just, it's just a whole can of worms. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it is a bad thing. And I think if people do enough research, they can see that it's bad. I think if you don't do research, you're just like, oh, it just makes images. But it's how the sausage is made that makes it a bad thing. But a cool director um, that has come out against AI is the directors behind Heretic, Nathan's most anticipated horror movie of the year. Hey, hey. They've come out and said in the trailer, of the, in, in the credits of Heretic, there is a line that says... No generative AI was used in this movie. That very very good. That that you know what? That that deserves that deserves a little. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's important. Like um the director is uh, Brian Woods and he you know basically is like, how is this shit legal? We should be pushing back against this, which is what I feel. So I'm like, how is AI art legal when it's literally is just stealing? <laughs> Uh, so I'm excited for Heretic, yeah, which comes out this weekend. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, it's weird, because a lot of the people who I see who are who don't give a shit or are fully on board with AI stuff are the people, oh, yeah, I, I hate modern movies, so soon we'll be able to make whatever we want and make mm. the movies we want to see. And it's like, yes, but uh, the problem is that that is also going to make the movie shittier, because now instead of having an artist generate things, some corporate suit can write in whatever formula activates mass appeal, and now an image pops out. So, um, you know, it's shitty for an artist, but it's shitty for film. And, you know, I, 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 think, I think if, if Heretic is, is any indication, I think that there will be this nice, uh, this, um, fuck, the, I think the pendulum will kind of swing the other way in the same way that it CGI, where, you know, there was, I, I feel like it was around, like, the 2000s, early 2010s, where CGI really started to explode in movies, and it's like, oh yeah, like, any cheap movie can now look pretty good, because CG has gotten to that point, and now we're getting to that point where it's like, we're kind of tired of just a bunch of CGI, and so when you have movies like, uh, like Mission Impossible, where it's like, this is all practical, like, we're all actually flying these vehicles and everything, that's when Oh, holy shit. That looks yeah. great because it's real. And we just CGI out all the safety stuff we put in the place to actually do this in the first place. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 we, like Tom we, Cruise doesn't actually like drive a motorcycle up the side of the mountain. There's like he's on a ramp, but like he is still driving the motorcycle up the fucking mountain. It's just on a ramp for his own safety. <laughs> yes, it is it is still Tom Cruise on a motorcycle driving uphill as a to uh, several million photographs of Tom Cruise used to collate into a CG model, you know, do whatever we want with and manipulate. Yeah. So, so hopefully people push against AI like they do push against CG. Not, 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 not that all CG is bad, no, um, no. but all AI is bad. So, or, or generative AI. There's good AI. It's it sucks that the, that the term is sort of like, and um, ambiguous with like machine learning. Like when you talk to like I don't know like fucking your whatever ai and you ask it a question like chat gpt it's just a more advanced google search it's just google search yeah, a yeah. bit more personalized with extra steps um i mean hell i use ai tools when i write because i <laughs> i'm a i'm a full-time writer that uh dropped out of high school so sometimes my grammar is not the best so i will have an ai 
see if I did a good job and I don't always agree with what it says, you know, because it's a tool. It's not replacing me. I'm not having it right for me. I'm having it give me a little double check as opposed to like, you know, spending thousands of dollars on an on a editor to say that I misspelled window as a winder. And I'm like, OK, shit, I could have probably caught that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. In an ideal world, AI is meant for the back end, not the front end. Where, you know, like if if you are a, I'll be generous and say writer instead of producer. If you are a writer who has an idea for a story, you want to show the director or the DP how you envision this shot for your story then bada bing bada boom you can get this sort of rough draft sketch and then from there they can go okay i understand the style you're going for and yeah from there the real artists can make the the end product yeah um, or even it could be used like cause some people might say that's a, a way to kill uh the job of a concept artist but i would say that it would give them a different step where you could go to a concept artist and say hey uh me like if i was like a writer yeah, I mean, I am, but like, you know, if I was a writer on like a thing like this where I'm like, hey, uh, here's my idea for how the character looks or the scene looks. Um, here's kind of what I can kind of make with AI, but could you actually like do this and maybe do that because I could get this to work or whatever. And then you have someone see like kind of the direction you want to go and then they could take it from there. Uh, yeah. Or like, you know, for like coding, because I know um, like coders who like kind of have it do like boring shit that they don't like want to repeatedly do all the time they'd rather do like the more fun stuff you know ai um code me like a um like an enter button for my program i don't want to have to fucking write it every time <laughs> or whatever you know what i mean yeah 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 but it's not like hey ai you make the whole thing <laughs> yeah. yeah i i need this visual at at, at this part of the movie no 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 if, if, <laughs> if we're in if we're in post-production we don't we don't want any ai get that shit out of here yeah. so i'm happy I, I will happily go see heretic this weekend wonderful and um because yeah it looks really good and i know nathan i mean you you turned me on to it so i'm excited to go watch it yeah yeah i i, I saw the first trailer and i was like you know, it's good old A24. I think I've yet to see a bad film from them. I'm sure they exist, but... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure they exist. Yeah, yeah. I've, I also have yet to see a bad A24 film. Wait a minute. Who did Long Legs? I think that was... Was that Neon? Oh, fuck, that might have been A24. I hope it's not Neon. I do actually trust Neon a bit. <laughs> oh, wait, Civil War was kind of mid. That's I haven't seen it. It's on, uh, you know, it's on my wars on bad. My Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. It is neon. Oh, uh, so. no, neon. Anyway, um, do you want to take a um, take a turn with movies? Because I have two more to talk about, but I'll let you go because we're taking turns. That's our new thing. Yeah, we're yeah, taking yeah. turns. OK, OK. Uh, yeah. Well, while uh, while we are on the the subject of horror uh i took another trip to <gasps> the asylum uh and i watched alien abduction from 2005 um oh, I, have to, I, have to go, and... I have to go to your litter box hold on yeah shit i'm sorry no it's okay um freaks i can't wait to talk about that <laughs> uh it's i forgot to put that on my list because i was like wait where's my weird 30s movie that i watched last week um <laughs> But, uh, so, Alien Abduction... Oh, you fucker, um, you watched Dinner in America. I have to watch that still. I fucking hate you. Where'd you, where'd you watch that? Where is that? I think that's on Hulu. Okay, uh, thank you. I will watch it soon. Funny thing is, uh, that was that was Katie's idea. Uh, she was like, I don't know why, but this random movie from, like, 2020 is getting really popular on TikTok. And then we watched the trailer. And she was more interested in seeing it than I was, but then we watched it. And I, oh, wow, that was great. Uh, um... The reason why is Red Letter Media. Oh, is that why? It was highlighted in their uh, Kyle Gallner tri uh, triathlon megathon thing. And then mm -hmm. they made a follow-up video talking just to think about, I think they did a follow-up video talking just about Dinner in America. And then they got a lot of positive buzz. And then they were, I think somehow it happened where they, you know, because Kyle Gallner's in a lot of movies right now because he, yeah, he works his ass off. 
Yeah. I kind of got to this point where like they were campaigning it around. They were able to get it in like a movie theater in LA. It sold out. Then they started releasing it more and more places. So it's going to have like a second life because when it came out, they couldn't like, it was the pandemic. So no, there was no theater showings for it. Yeah. So now there's like been showings of it in like select locations. So it's kind of had a rebirth. Um, and, and I've heard it's really good. I mean, you gave it a four star, so it's probably amazing for me. It is very good. Um, I said that uh, Kyle Gallner would make a great habit uh, if they ever make a, <laughs> a Hollywood adaptation of Everman Hybrid. And you know what? Uh, he would do it. <laughs> he would do it. No, and, I, and I'd love to see it. Um, love that Kyle yeah. Gallner. He's great. Um, but I watched Alien Abduction. Ah, oh, shit. I'm uh, sorry. No, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I don't want to discuss Dinner in America more because you still got to see it. I uh, see it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so Alien <laughs> Abduction was, oh, um, no. Oh, no. it was very interesting. Um, oh, no. I, I feel like, I feel like it was the, I, I feel like it was a more <sighs> earnest attempt by the Asylum to get a little subversive and high concept in their writing. Oh. Uh, it did not land because oh. it's the asylum and they didn't have the actual budget to, to, to do anything with it really. Um, but basically I'll, I'll, I'll give you the gist of spoilers for alien abduction. So, you know, skip ahead, whatever. <laughs> um, but, uh, a group of friends go out camping in the woods. Fuck, it's and, so good. And they get, uh, they they stumble across aliens that look wonderful. Um, I wish they, I, I they, could get like a good quality view, view of them, man, for the thumbnail. I'm trying over here, brother. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, no chance. No, I shot. gotta AI um, upscale this. It's uh, it, it kind of looks like a uh, like a sock puppet gremlin almost. I mean, um, they're wonderful. Uh, they just, get abducted by aliens. It's just pixels. Um, they th when they're on the alien ship, uh, all of the walls and floor is clearly like crumpled up black garbage bags yes. to make it look vaguely cave-ish. Um, but you know they get th <sighs> put through the ringer and 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 split off and tortured and killed and various, and then eventually. Uh, our lead girl is able to get away, um, and she's taken to an insane asylum, which turns out to be a um, uh, alien, or I'm sorry, a, a U.S. Army uh, like alien UFO recovery place for for victims of abduction, so that the U.S. military can can get insight into what the fuck happened. Okay, um, I guess that's like. The, kind of actually a good idea that is a, that is kind of actually a good idea um unfortunately and, <laughs> and then uh double twist uh it turns out that she is in fact still on the alien ship um and it's i don't uh, i don't i don't know if my brain didn't absorb the information or if they gave me conflicting information but it either the <sighs> Either the U.S. military was actually in league with these aliens and was helping them do whatever they wanted to do in order to get, you know, alien tech and shit, I guess. Or it was all completely an illusion made up by the aliens to, I don't know, uh, uh, but they're like cloning people too, and there's like little like cockroach parasites that they put into people it was, you know it, it it got a little muddled uh hey, it lost uh, its way i have a question for you yeah why is 40 percent of the movie blue and then 40 percent of the movie green and then like 20 percent like normal colors uh, because forty percent of it is on the alien spaceship uh, and then forty percent of it is in the asylum that's all I need to know so. thanks so much there it is. yeah you know. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find a uh <laughs> a, no a, I, I I feel you uh this is also the most amount of titties I've seen yet in an asylum film uh but they're not happy titties they're um, they're they're sad they're no sad one, no one likes titties. that 
So yeah, I was like, what? Are, come on. Um, and I'll do I'll do one more since these are double. Feet. Bounce it back here. Um, from my miscellaneous, uh, and also still kind of on theme sci-fi. Um, I watched Sphere from 1998, uh, starring Dustin Hoffman. Um, that sucked. Uh, <laughs> Hey, so uh, I can't uh, um, get a good. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you'll get good ones from this either. I'm, um, I'm still on fucking. Uh... <laughs> I'm it's still it's on alien tough... abduction, bro. It's, it's rough. It's rough out there. Um. Uh, but um, so sphere is uh, it's about um a a a, a UFO crashes into the ocean i guess uh and sinks to the bottom and so they 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 put together this group of scientists based on a uh theoretical uh government response that dustin hoffman had drafted up as some kind of professor or government agent i don't know um and so they go to explore it um and it turns out to be a ship from the future and um and they begin receiving transmissions from uh, a figure that they think is like frozen in stasis on the ship um uh and um and uh it 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 kind of just gets muddled away into weird bullshit sci-fi where basically um they're able to enter this section of the ship where they um their uh their fears come to life because of uh, i guess alien technology i don't know um but they realize that there's not actually any alien just them uh manifesting their fears um and it's just it's just god awful uh this is probably the worst dustin Hall performance i've ever seen um and uh, uh, I, I think I said in my review, it's Tim and Sharon Stone fighting it out to give a worse performance, and that's scary because uh, Sharon Stone is already not great in most things. Um, but yeah, so that uh, that God was that was Sphere. Fucking damn it! I can't get this god. Fuck YouTube, bro. Piece of shit. <laughs> Like, I go to oh, click no. on the stip tool, and then it, it has to display, oh, it's in full screen, by the way. And I'm like, yes, I know. Can I take the fucking screenshot, please? <laughs> He's got you, man. I'm going to die. No, 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 no. You got this. I got this. Please tell me that was it. Please, please, Indy, tell me I found something. Ah, it's all right. Okay, it's why is it so blurry? It's so bad. Man, wait, was there? Did I miss Sharon Stone hate? Uh, I I threw a little shade her way. I actually don't have a strong opinion about Sharon Stone. I'll be honest with you. It's weird because I recognize the name, and I was like, "What the fuck has she done?" Like, I feel like she's good in other. Then I tried looking. I couldn't find anything that really stood out. So I was like, oh, maybe this is standard Sharon Stone. I don't know. This is really not good. She's a, uh, is that, is she the basic instinct? Uh, yes, she is the basic instinct. <laughs> this is so I bad. I, I can't that. delete this off the thumbnail. That was such a, a foolhardy effort. Listen, it, it tells a story. That alien abduction is so good. Listen, it's uh, um, you know, it, it, I, I, I can't help. I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe you're able to get better assets once we get to the era of the buster. Um, but we're like right on the cusp. It's bad so. right now, man. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't get Samuel Jackson, Lee Schreiber, Queen Latifah. I might have seen this before. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's really weird. Um. I I, uh, I bet I can get a fucking image of Sphere. <laughs> I hope so. It has actors in it, dude. It does have actors in it. That that will work to its advantage. Um, 
I completely forgot that Lee Schreiber was in it. Is he um he kind of reminds me of his character in Scream a little bit, where he's like this he's he's this very like pompous. I want I want to get credit. I want to be famous kind of guy. Yeah, did he spoilers for Scream? But he died way too soon. A hundred percent. He had such an interesting character. Like when, because uh, you know, when on my recent rewatch, I I had completely forgotten all about, like pretty much all of Scream. So when he uh, he came back in three, I was like, oh shit, this is great! Like he, he's a little protagonist, and then nope, it's bad, man. That's that was one of the worst Scream decisions, I'd say. I mean, Scream three is one of the worst, possibly the worst. I think- uh, uh, mm, it's up there with six, man. I don't know. <laughs> I know exactly. They're they're fighting it out. It, what's so funny is because they're both like uh, fairly similar in concept. Yeah, I yeah, I don't sure. know. I think like mm, the highs in six are higher, but the lows, man. Yes, I would I would agree. The uh, lows are so low. Stream three is more just consistently meh. It is consistently um, like oh, okay, yeah, Scream Three, yeah. like oh, interesting. But now, okay. you know, now with the the knowledge of oh, um, man of Seven coming out, um, you know, they they also share that issue where like I don't know, like it, it, it it's it's weird to me that it took until six for there to be returning survivors besides the core three. You know, yeah. Um, because like you know, Lee Schreiber shows up in three, and it's like, oh, cool, he's like joined the main cast now. And now he died. No. It's like, oh, okay. And you know, and you get to four, which is trying to be a reboot. And fucking everyone dies from that until they resurrect. So, so until they find um Hayden Penn and Terry or whatever on her fucking farm, and they're like, convince her to come back. I. You know, what? I think I think people. this might be old news, but I think she like doesn't have like an agent or anything. Like to get her for Scream, uh, whatever the new one that she thinks it was six. Yeah. Like someone just had to like no know, knew where she lived and had to go out and like drive out to her farm to ask her to come back. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Like she's just like cut the fuck off, and I'm like, you know what? Good. I wish I, I was trying- that. I that's so I'm jealous honestly. You know. Well, uh mm. yeah. No, I I I would I would imagine that's kind of like how Harrison Ford is except only his agent knows where he lives. Yeah. You know. Unless you see a plane flying and you're like, "Oh, that might be Harrison Ford." I, he, it just might be. Is he getting away from it all for a couple <laughs> hours? <laughs> so I watched some movies. Yes. On a movie watching, uh, I rewatched a movie. Um, I rewatched Apostle, starring Dan Stevens and directed by Gareth Evans of the Raid Claim fame. What the fuck? You've, have you not seen Apostle? Uh, uh, I I uh, I think that's one of the episodes in. It is. It might be a couple. Um, and I see that Joe has it on his watch list. So this Joe Saya is listening. You should watch Apostle. It's on. It's a Netflix film, but it's a 2018 Netflix film. So hopefully that is uh, a bit more appetizing. That's when they were still kind of experimenting. That's when Netflix still had the model of, "Hey, filmmaker, make whatever you want because we have the biggest already audience in the world that somebody will find it." It's before they were like. Nope, the algorithm says. <laughs> Fuck, man, I hate algorithms. Me too. So this is pre-algorithm, because there's some scenes in this movie I was watching it where I was like, oh yeah, this was before they had the whole um, second screen mentality. There's, like, there's some shots in this movie where I'm like, yeah, if you were not watching, you missed that entirely. Like That is just gone for you. <laughs> Even I can't just be on my phone when I'm watching it? Uh, apparently not. Is not like kind of yeah. fucked up and like ableist. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of weird. Like I'm supposed to just have attention for like two hours. Oh my goodness, man! 
Some people, I'm so sorry that you're so brain rotted. I'm gonna not include this thing he's holding. Anyway, sorry, I'm talking to the I'm talking to the, the live viewer here who's seeing what I'm doing. I'm not I'm not including is, this stick. Is he is he holding something bad? It, it, no, it's just like it's it's blurry and I don't wanna like it's a stick. I don't wanna like fucking sit here for like five minutes like keyframing the stick. Oh, for yeah, it, for it to be covered up by the next movie I talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know. <laughs> But no, it's it's really good. It's um it's a fun like I wouldn't even call it like a straight up horror movie because it's sort of like doing a lot of things at once. So it's like basically this guy gets a ransom letter from this like weird culty commune who lives in this island. And it's it's the letters for his dad, and it's like, hey, we have your daughter. Give us the ran this this ransom money and we'll let her go free. But the dad's like, you know, not like he's pretty like mentally like not there. So um, they tell it to the to son who they thought died in like a, like on like a, like a like a religious mission. They thought he died, but he actually survived. But no one knows that because the sister's gone. The dad's like ill, so he decides, All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go save my sister, but I'm not gonna give them any money. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna go save my sister. Mm. So on the way there, he kind of susses out like they're looking for him. He kind of smuggles his way in, and then it's kind of him like ingratiating himself into the commune while also looking for his sister okay okay and so there's some elements that are like very much a horror movie that's pretty creepy and there's a lot of it where it's like religious like doctrine and like that's creepy where it's like about like what religion makes you do and there's like a, a big mystery on the island with like what they're worshiping um mm. a lot of struggles with like faith and like ideology and community um so it's more than just like a horror movie it's very much like a, a religious drama with um lots of horror elements and then um every so often you get 30 seconds of the raid because <laughs> whenever any action happens you're like oh god it's right it's the raid guy <laughs> Does does Dan Stevens know Kung Fu? I wish, man. I kind of wish there was a longer fight scenes, honestly, because I mean it is the braid guy. But I think he wanted to tell a more like, um, I don't know, like a theological religious story. But but whenever he has to bust it out, it's like, oh yeah, this is the raid. <laughs> does 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 he do it better than the uh, uh, miscellaneous crank infusions into in the witch movie? In the uh, in the crooked man, yes, yes, much better. Yes, okay, all right, yeah. No, you can tell it's like, oh shit, okay, we've switched to the raid. Um, how's you look at the cast? I was watching it and I was like, oh my god, that's um, uh, it was like a guy from Utopia, I forget his oh. name. It was the guy who like works for the company who doesn't want to be, so he's trying to like kind of like from the inside. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he I he's really good in this. Obviously, D uh, Doug Dale, Utopia. Doug Dale. Man, a lot of Utopia people just crop up in random horror movies. I swear to God. I mean, hey, they were in they were in great shit. Yeah, I also had a jump <laughs> scare. Oh, I was gonna say great shit, but kind of indie. So that's like just ripe for being put into horror movies. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, Michael Sheen's in it. Oh. He's like the head of the cult. Okay, interesting. And then also I had a jump scare. There was this one kid. I was like, I know his fucking face from something. And then I was like, oh my god, it's the kid who played young Magneto in first class. <laughs> I, uh. I know those ears. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know who that Bro. is. Brother's got some big ears. And he's really good. He has a, a really, he's a really interesting arc in the movie, too his own thing that he does that's uh really sad and uh is a very gruesome scene it's one of the few like actual horror horror movie scenes but also he gets like one of the few raid scenes too or it's, oh, like, okay. it's, or it's like you two fight better than you should but i allow it because i get to watch the raid for five minutes <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes it's okay that you know how to do this i'm watching uh the raid in like a religious medieval village yeah that's forgivable it's fine uh, so yeah, I, I do recommend Apostle. It's not like the most like groundbreaking, amazing movie. It's just a really nice, interesting, 
time with good performances, good ambiance, good action, and a very, very like interesting story to consume. It's one that I like a lot. I, as a creative, I kind of have a story that's a bit similar to this. So getting to watch it is sort of like, ah, <laughs> yay. A nice little proof of concept. Yeah, I'm like, ah, this can be done. Thank God. <laughs> it's not just me. Um, I also just watched a movie called it's I'll talk about this for a minute. It's a documentary called uh, Brandy Hellville and the Cult of Fast Fashion. It is about um, this. We would know this because we're both like men about to hit 30. Uh, yeah. But Brandy, uh, I think it's Brandy Melville. Is like a clothing brand that like young girls like. And this documentary kind of talks about like their business practices, how they would essentially like they only had one size of clothing. It's one size fits all. And they would like find girls out in public and like be like, oh, my God, like you should come work for Brandy Melville. Um, like your like your your outfit's amazing. And then like or if you shop there, the girls would be instructed to like take your picture, like your outfit and send it up to like management. And, like, offer you a job, but, like, they only ever, like, hired, like, young, skitty, like, like, teenage, young, white girls who, like, fit the size. Sure. And uh, that's all. And they had, like, no advertisement other than their Instagram. And it was just really gross how, like, every day for your shift, you'd have to, like, get your picture taken by the supervisor that sends it up to the guy in charge. And he has, like, a whole, like, collage of all the girls and oh man he if he doesn't like how you look he'll tell the store manager to fire you if you're not the right weight um they won't hire like people who are like black or if they do you're in the stock room and not allowed to go talk to customers they allow oh, some asians but they're normally at the register not out and about and on the store talking to customers and being in the face right so it's it's half the documentary is about like this clothing store is creepy but also the other half is talking about like fast fashion, how the clothes they have like a new it's basically a new style season every week and how like fast fashion is enforced, how like to be hip and trendy and like accepted, you have to have the newest, best thing. But that leads to like really cheap clothing that then gets like shipped out to like Ghana and they're like drowning in clothes and it's like like the beaches are covered in clothes Okay. And they're all from like U.S. and Europe, and they just like you know with fast fashion, just like you know these people who like buy a shirt, wear it like two times, and then like donate it, and then the donations don't actually get donated because there's too much fucking clothes. They just get sent to fucking Ghana, and then like they have to just they're like just drowning in the fucking clothes all day. So it was a good documentary. Talking, I mean, I like to sometimes watch documentaries and um. Fast fashion is a thing I kind of care about because of the sustainability aspects of it, how it's not very sustainable to be constantly buying new clothes. No. Um, it's bad. You should be thrifting. Uh, you should be keeping clothes. You should be buying clothes to keep, not clothes to wear for like an event. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So it's a good, it's a good documentary and also kind of how it's a really creepy business practice. I didn't know about this brand at all. Um, and now I hate them. <laughs> uh, but the you know, mm. sometimes you gotta you gotta learn new things to realize what you hate. You know? Yeah, it's like oh cool, <laughs> new hatred has been unlocked today. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. So the last thing, last movie, I'd say not the last thing, but the last movie. So I saw this movie in theaters. I went to my local cinema. Oh. Um. I saved a, a, a picture for the thumbnail. There we are. Hello. I went to the movies this weekend and I saw a film I've been hyped to see for a while. And OK, help. Give me the image. Thank you. It's called Anora. Yeah. We're going to make her real big on the thumbnail. Right next to Dan Stevens. They should be in a movie together. Um, I saw Anora <laughs> starring uh, Mikey Madison who I've only ever seen in Scream 5. 
Oh, oh. She's the other. I mean, say spoilers. She's the other ghost face. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, her and Jack Quaid. So she's the other ghost face. And I remember when yeah. I watched Scream 5, and it was some years afterwards, but I was like, I know who Jack Quaid is. I don't know who this other okay. chick is. I remember when I watched Scream 5, I wasn't like blown away. Yeah. But apparently the director of Anora was blown away because he watched Scream 5 and then like made this movie for her. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was like so impressed. And I gotta say, this man has a fucking eye for talent because Mikey Madison was a fucking force of nature in Anora. Uh, Anora, the, the basic plot of it is uh, Anora is a uh, prostitute in New York who gets um, like the owner of the club basically is like, hey, do you know Russian? We have like a high roller here. We want him to have a girl who can talk Russian. So he's not speak English all night because he hates it. So she meets this like young Russian kid at 21. He's like a fucking goober and they hit it off and then. This kind of forms into like he wants to like meet her up like on days where she's not working and for like private sessions, which leads to him being like, I will pay you fifteen thousand dollars to be my girlfriend for a week and live with me for a week and you know, fuck me for a week. Which then leads to let's get married. Oh god. But how is he so rich when he just parties all day and does nothing? And that's when the parents get involved and the movie takes a fucking sharp turn. Um, that's all I want to. That's like the, all, all of the plot I want to say, because the movie is very much about characters. Which is honestly probably why I love the movie so much. Mm. I'm a big character guy. I more so care about like the characters and the journeys they go on than like. Other anything else, really. So this movie had really strong characters, really great acting. Uh, Mikey Madison is fucking outstanding in this movie. Like she is incredible. Um, such good, yeah, such good fucking act. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, I've been like head over heels for the past day. I'm like Jesus Christ. I was be sitting here. I'm like, man, remember fucking Mikey Madison and Nora? That was crazy. <laughs> um, so this movie is gonna probably. Great, get a lot of rewards, which it should. It won the uh, Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, which is like their the big award, the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, okay. I was gonna say all all their awards are have weird fucking names. So yeah, I that's never know that's what the... it means. Because <laughs> it's in French. Uh. It's, it's French, no. But this um, is a French restaurant. This is a French restaurant. I I am French. Uh, yeah, the the Palme d'Or, which um, it, the funny thing about the Palme d'Or from from Cannes is that like, typically like, um, it's like a really high honor, and normally yeah. uh, <laughs> for the past couple years, uh, every time there's been a Palme d'Or winner, um, Neon will snatch up the distribution rights. <laughs> uh, they always get it. Like uh, I think Parasite was uh one of the big ones. Oh okay. And uh, stuff like that. I think. Uh, I think maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Parasites was 2019. But yeah, it's a, honestly a really fucking good movie. Um, big recommend from me if you like. Uh, it's like a drama. It's a comedy. It's 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 the most depressing, funny movie of the year. There are times where our theater was like laughing our asses off. Other times where people were like in the complete stunned silence and the ending was so fucking um arresting that i literally just sat there until the credits were done and there was no music it was just like fucking dead silence and i was just sitting there like fuck (laughs) like that happened to me i witnessed that (laughs) um so very fucking good yeah this was this was my movie this is I was going to say, I, I, I kept seeing trailers for it at theaters, and I was like, this looks, you know, it, it looks very, you know, up, you know, a Cannes Film Festival winner. But, I, like, I was I was intrigued, because, like, I don't know why, because, like, I, I don't even think the, the plot looks that interesting to me. No, and it's not. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, something about this. I don't know if it's the style or what. Like, I 
see this. I think it's on my list somewhere. Yeah, you know? I uh, highly recommend. It's a movie of of characters being characters, and um, num 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 num. Like <laughs> eat that shit up. Like give me that all day, every day. Uh, it's. Only the fourth movie this year I gave a full five stars to. Not bad. I didn't even give Smile 2 five stars. What did you give Smile 2? Four and a half. Four and a half? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know why. I think, I think I, I've sort of um, taken the Dave Meltzer approach. Where if I have to question if it's a five star, it's not a five star. Fair. Where I'm like, if I have to really like think about it, then something then it just doesn't hit it and um i mean i love smile too but i don't know, i think I, I think there's some bits i just wanted like a bit more out of it um even though it was fucking phenomenal i mean it's my number five of the year so it is really fucking good oh, yeah. it's just i thought there were there could have been like there could have been a, something more i'm not sure what it is but because of that i have to not give it the full five unfortunately but. It's fair. You know, sometimes sometimes it's hard to quantify. Because, like, I, I remember right after I watched The Birds, I was entering it. And Katie was like, how much? How high are you ranking? And I was like, I'm giving it four stars. And she, Why doesn't it reach five? And I was like, well, five is like the godfather. Yeah. Real good. I'm like, okay, so what, what is The Birds missing? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, this, just, this is just where it feels right. Yeah, I'd say, like, after four, it's really vibes. It is. It's like four and a half is like, this was a, such a fucking good, solid fucking movie. But five is like, this is the pantheon of like excellence. Yeah, th this is like the. I. Uh, it gets to the point where it's like, I can't see this movie because it's too good. It's too rich. Like, yes, I, I need this movie for special occasions. That that's it, too. Yeah, I feel like it's final two. I put on whenever, but I feel like I know I'd have to be like, all right, let's fucking. We're going to get our hearts destroyed today. <laughs> yeah, I got to buckle in. I, yeah, I got to fucking lock in for this one. Um, yeah, I've only given four movies five stars. Dune, Challengers, and Look Back and Anora. It's been a tough yeah. year, but a lot, of good, a lot of good horror this year, too. Well, something from this year uh, that I did watch uh, that did not get five stars... Um, was from my my list of of trailer wins. Uh, if I if you're somehow watching and I haven't expanded upon this, uh, I made a list of every um, American, Australian, British, and South Korean film that came out uh, this year. Uh, a playlist of all their trailers, and I've been watching through. And anyone that's remote, pick out and add to my list. And I've slowly started chipping away at that. So this is my second movie. <laughs> <laughs> that I watched from the list. Um, it's called He Went That Way, um, which is, it's this weird, um, I, I don't know how you classify him, where I guess it's the inspired by a true story, but it's like not even using the the real life people's names and everything. It's, I guess it's just taking the concept introduced from these real events and making it into a movie. Um, but it is starring Zachary Quinto and uh, some other some putts. Uh, Whoa, and, Jacob Elordi, uh, man! What the fuck? I don't know who he is. He's he great. Good. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, sorry, Chef. <laughs> he, he's got. You see, he's got some. He's got some. He, he's he's got room from here, I guess. Oh, sorry. Um, but uh, so so Zachary Quinto is a animal trainer for this uh, a TV monkey who hey, was could very you, uh, clearly... could you click on and off your uh, toggle your audio thing? Oh, shit, is it being Yeah, funky? a little bit. I'm sorry, my love. Piss. No, no, no. It's, it is what it is. Hold I'm on. I'm trying to get you there. Just a moment. I'm just trying to get you there. Let me just... All these uh... posters I'm finding online cut, like, Jacob Elordi in half, and he's at the most, like, prominent one on the poster. Oh, that is... It's very rude. Well. Is, it, uh, is this any better? Or does that, that sound you are fine right now. For right now. Okay. Okay. See what um, happens. Yeah, I mean, how about, how about now? Is that yeah. All? Okay, cool. I literally just switched it back and forth, so... Um, sometimes, man, just gotta slap it. Sometimes the mic just gets a little tired. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so he went that way. 
Zachary Quinto is an animal uh, monkey that has been on TV. Uh, the monkey very clearly being played by someone in costume. Uh, it was very jarring. Um, and he is on uh, he's on this long like cross-country drive um, because all of his, I guess, TV opportunities have kind of dried up and he needs to find work for him and his monkey. Um, and, and this he, is a, and to just, I want to make sure this is a fake monkey. This is a fake monkey. Very clearly um, a fake monkey. Very clearly a fake monkey. And to be, they, they try to film around it as much as they can. Uh, there's very, it's very rare that you see shots full on of the monkey, but when you do, you're like, uh, something's not right. Um, the, the, like, the mask and everything is pretty good. But, like, once you see the monkey, like, sitting or walking around, it's like, nope, not right. Um, uh, but anyway, so he uh, picks up this random, uh, you know, uh, sort of James Dean-esque fella, uh, hitchhiker. Um, and the guy turns out to be a serial. Um, and, uh, and so he's kind of like... Okay, listen. Like, yeah, you could, uh, you you could just kill me and take my car off, but you know, I'm I'm a respectable, normal person, uh, and I can I can get you where you want to go uh, inconspicuously, and it'll all be fine. Um, and so I get they they just kind of agree to this setup, and and periodically the the guy will like attack people or kill people or do like heists and then Zachary Quinto like the getaway driver um you know uh it wasn't very good <laughs> it, it, it for one th- this was probably the worst Zachary Quinto performance I've seen um he it's also he, the worst he, uh, Jacob Elori performance you've ever seen <laughs> it must it must be um he, Zachary Quinto kind of reminded me of um he kind of reminded me of Mark Wahlberg in The Happening. Like, oh, you know, man. when he's doing, the trees are killing people? Oh, no. Like, he, he has, like, that kind of, it's always like this, it's like this constantly, like, kind of questioning tone, but nervous. It, it, I don't know what, but it was, like, it's, it's, he's, he had the same, like, delivery for every line. Um, but, like, it, it just kind of felt like the movie couldn't commit to a tone. Like it, like at times it was like, is this like a weird, like black comedy buddy road trip? Is, is this a thriller? Like I don't like it. It didn't go too far in any direction. Blah. Um. So, you know, whatever. Um. And then the last thing. I, I have uh, a quick. My... I have a quick. Oh, please. Um, okay. So, uh, <laughs> this is really weird. So, the, the, I, I want to look at who the director was, because you're like, this movie sucks. And I'm like, that's weird, because, like, Zachary Quinto and Jacob Elordi are, are good actors. Yeah, yeah, I know they can be good. So, so, the common denominator is, well, A, the director, but B, they probably came on set and were like, what's with the fucking monkey? And then we're like, I don't, I can't, I just need the paycheck. I can't do this, <laughs> which yeah. I think it would be a fair thing. Um, so I love the director and this was his directorial debut. Oh boy. He was known for, according to IMDb, I think this might be some disparate like information. This is the puzzle pieces I'm putting together. Um, for for this movie, according to IMDb, he did cinematography for a bunch of like random movies in the night in the late eighties to ninety to very early nineties. Okay, he was a cinematographer for um, the Crossing, starring Russell Crowe. I've never heard of this movie in my fucking life. Oh, and a bunch of other random stuff like Young Einstein. What? What even is this? Starring not Young Frankenstein. Written. Directed and starring Yahoo Sirius. I've never heard of this man. He looks like a like a wannabe um, Biodome guy. What's this? Oh no! <laughs> yeah, Polly Shore. <laughs> Polly Shore. Yes. 
a knockoff oh, Polly Shore from Timu. So oh no, this is his directorial debut. Um, but he uh, he he passed away a year before the movie came out. Oh, in a surfing accident. <laughs> what? I'm so confused. <laughs> uh, I, I'm baffled. Uh, Was this is this movie haunted? That that could be. Um, because it 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 really doesn't feel like there's any direct. So, I don't know how much he actually was able to film. Maybe, maybe this is like a fifty percent pickup shoot. Sort of. It might have been, and they were just you like know? so like harrowed by that that they just like they just couldn't. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyway, he yeah. went that way. I, that that explains that is, that explains a lot. Um. Yeah, if the director just wasn't there for half the movie because he passed away, and so everyone's like, oh, I guess we have to finish it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I was. Uh, so this is the arc that Zachary goes on. Um, so this whole time he is driving towards this opportunity, and he, like, is trying to pick up other work, and he, like, phones his wife at home to, like, say that he's trying to find things. She's like, no, 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 just do this thing that I set up. Okay. Uh, he gets to the end of his trip, and he, and it turns out that some, like, rich lady wants to buy his monkey so that it can be free from a life of a performer. She's like, oh, it's miserable, like, it hates it, and then, like, it very clear, like, the monkey very clear. like, she's, like, trying to take its clothes, and it's freaking out. And- what the fuck? No, I'll find another way to make my money, and then he just leaves with his monkey. What the like, fuck? All right. What yeah. the hell? It, it's very weird, and the monkey is like the is almost like the selling point for Jacob Bellorty because he saw the monkey on TV. Like, hey, it's great! It's a TV monkey. The whole time, Zach Quinto's like, yeah, yeah, you don't want to kill us. You love this monkey. It's like what? What? What the fuck? No way. That's yeah. fucking um, awesome, dude. Yeah, so so the so those elements are are um baffling, uh but entertaining, I suppose. That's uh, so good. And again, it's so weird because it, it it changes like all of the major details of the story, but it is based on the story. And so yeah. like the end credits has like a partial interview with the guy who inspired Zachary Quinto's character. What? And, and like him talking about it, it, uh, it was very weird. What? Yeah. That's and he's like, yeah, it's very, it's very weird that the the monkey was the hero of the story. You know, I was just kind of there, and it's like, uh, what am I watching? Wait, so the the movie ends with an interview from the guy the movie's based on, going, "This movie kind of sucks." A, a little bit, yeah. Oh heavens! It, it does. It, it does kind of feel that way. Oh sweet Jesus! Okay, okay, yeah, okay, um, okay. But the, okay. the, the, the but the last thing um, that I watched uh-huh. uh, was the 1932 film Freaks, um, this which is very interesting. Have you have you heard of this? No, this- he didn't, you didn't even give it a review. It's just like it's just there. I know. I know, because uh, I was looking over my list today, and then I was like, wait, where's my... I might, have, I might have seen this as, oh my god, I might have seen this as a kid. It's very weird. Um, oh, wow. I, I, I saw uh, uh, one of the, the Simpsons Treehouse of Horrors does this, uh, so I was somewhat familiar with what was going on. Um, but, like, the big selling point of this movie is that it is showing real life circus performers uh you know and and side sideshow acts uh who are um well they are quote unquote freaks they're you know there's uh there's um you know short people there's people without legs people without arms uh the 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 uh i think they call them pinhead people i don't know what the are for any of these things i apologize um but it, it it's weird because it's kind of just showing what circus life is like back then. Um, and this movie was very like this movie was very controversial when it came out. The, you know, people were like, "Is this is this exploitative? Is this like actually 
you know, it, it, like, is it sending a good message? It has elements of being a horror movie. Is that <laughs> a, a, a bad light to, to throw these people in? Um, it's it's very interesting. Um, so the basic story is um, one of the one of the uh, little people in the circus uh, is being seen by a trapeze artist who is trying to uh, uh, get all his money because he apparently just inherited a lot of wealth. Um, and, uh, you know, she very clearly doesn't give a shit about it. They uh, plans things so that they get married and then she can poison him and inherit all his money and then um, him and all of the other uh, circus performers discover this, that she is actually disdainful of them and uh you know is is a uh, uh, piece of shit and so they they torture her and turn her into one of the exhibits so what? permanent hard and feathered and um yeah it's it, it's 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 very freaky um yeah it, it, it's it's great it's really good um and if you're a freak. yeah it, it, yeah precisely um it's it's very interesting to see real life circus attractions and like, you know, they have some, you know, they address like some of the things where, you know, people will shit on them because they're different. But then you also have the quote unquote normal people who work at the circus who do relate to them and, you know, everything's hunky dory. It was, it was, it was very, it, it, it felt insightful um, to, to see what that kind of life was like. So, yeah. Uh, uh, check it out. Interesting. The, apparent, interesting. Apparently, like, so the one I saw had an added in ending to sort of be like the happy ending because the the original ending is just seeing the fate of the trapeze artist and how she is at the end. And, Holy shit! Um, but they added on a little thing where the the little person is like strolling around in his mansion and he's like, "Ah, oh, life's good." And it's like, oh, okay. There we go. Ugh. Oh yeah. Did Tony Storm show up at all, or was it a? Was uh, not... you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see her. Um, no, that's a shame. I, I think she might have been working on a match with Wendy Richter at the yeah, time. Yeah, you're right. So. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Um, to end our little podcast, I'm gonna bring up a topic from an old video. So, oh, let me sip my uh. Hmm. All right, so our final topic. Uh, a while ago, I, I talked about how they announced that Destiny, the game I play, unfortunately, uh, is having a mobile version come out. Oh, yeah. And I was invited to play the alpha. So I oh, was, shit. I'm one of the elite, I don't actually know how many people, probably, got, probably a lot, actually. I'm just, let me feel important for a minute. I'm one of the few who uh, has played... Destiny Rising. And I, so I'm here to uh, uh, talk about my experience thus far. I, um, I did a few things in regards to Destiny Rising. I tried it on my phone, and my phone wanted to die. The graphics were utterly terrible. Oh, no. And I was like, you know what? It's been over like two years. I guess I do need a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was right. I had like one payment left on my phone, so I just paid it off, got a new phone. Um hey. with a better like better stuff and everything. So I got a brand new phone, brand spanking new. It's a Galaxy S24 Plus. Bigger screen, better for comic reading, which is great for hey. me. And I was a dork and I ordered a um a controller for your phone. Good. So what it does is it like it it uh it opens up so you can put your phone and then you close it and then it, you know, syncs to your phone's size. Nice. So, you know, all phones are welcome. Uh, and it's pretty good. I, I, there's a more expensive one that I could have gotten, but I, I kind of wanted to get the middle range one because I didn't know how much I was going to care about this. Sure. Um, so I've been playing Destiny Rising about every day, though the first day or two, I'll admit I wasn't playing that much because it was on my shitty old phone. But ever since on my new, my newer phone with my controller, it's a lot better because when because you can play it like just on the touch screen, so you have to like 
move on the screen to to run and then move with the right thumb to shoot but then like you can't it's hard to like like aim and move at the same time and shoot. it's it sucked but with the control oh, yeah. it's so much better so i'm here to say that destiny rising is actually like way too good to be a mobile game <laughs> Nice. It's a legitimate, I'd say, competitor to Destiny. And I'd say like like I'd say all mobile FPS games, it's actually really fucking good. It has like full on levels and full on areas and the hub area is huge and there's big missions and social areas and like a bunch of different game types and ways to play. And it has like I did a fucking like mission with other people the other day. Or it was like me and two randos on my phone did a mission together. Damn. There's PvP I haven't played yet, apparently. They're going to have like six man raids, I think, where it's six person co op events hmm. on your phone. That's pretty wild. It's kind of crazy how good the game runs. And it's, I mean, the gunplay is definitely not as good as like Destiny 2. Sure. But for like a, a mobile game to first person shooter, it's really good. Um, yeah, what, what did you say something? See, I was going to say, it's funny because uh, I, I, I tried to sign up for the, for the beta for the Rebel mobile game, uh, and I haven't heard anything back yet. So. Oh. Like, how, realistically, how many people are... Oh. Trying to get it. <laughs> You're one of the three. I'll make it four today, though. Uh, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, no, Destiny Rising was actually like it's been pretty fun so far. And the, the alpha is going for like a month. Um, okay. So it's pretty fucking solid. I I like it. It has like some so, sort of a gimmick is like in regular Destiny. And Nathan, you know from your one hour of playing, you can like choose a, a class. Yeah, and then from there you can level up your character and do your own stuff. And Destiny Rising, you don't do that. You get characters, and each character oh. has their own abilities and weapons they can use. So you're sort of leveling up multiple characters for different scenarios. Okay, okay. And because of that, you can collect multiple characters. Of course. Through, uh, you know, essentially like gotcha, like you you. Say, I have 10 tokens, give me 10 draws, and then 10 random things with a percentage to get a good character. Remember, kids, gambling is fun. It is! So, uh, thankfully, you can't pay for stuff yet, I think, in Destiny Rising, because it is just the alpha, so, like, I'm pretty yeah. sure your progress will reset when the full game comes out. Probably. Um, it's just for, like, so they know what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. But... It, I mean, the fact that this game is this good without the polish of the full game is crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised because yeah, that's that's a pretty because because you're you're you know you're beta testing it essentially. So have I always feel like that just sounds like a miserable experience <laughs> because it's nowhere near put together but and it's not really i'd say close. the worst part is that some some uh, there's a good portion of the um dialogue that is ai generated voice acting oh but it says it's ai and they've confirmed it is just a placeholder for the alpha okay and okay. not in the finished game that's good because everyone was like whoa me too i was like whoa and then they were like no 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 it's hold just on, it's just because you know not everything's done yet so we don't want to like pay the voice actors to say the lines and then have them like redo it yeah so there's some stuff where it's like this is a story thing the audio is done but like you know it'll go ai when they say a certain mission mission objective and a thing to do and i'm like ah they haven't gotten that part yet because <laughs> <laughs> what if that doesn't work and they have to redo it so okay all right so it's 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 also funny because you'll be talking to a character then all of a sudden like it'll just change to like a complete robotic version of their voice uh Which is pretty funny but i'm happy it's not a permanent thing. it's probably the only thing that's been weird everything else has worked really fucking well it's actually kind of challenging i thought for a phone game they'd probably make it easy but it's been like 
I've kind of got my ass kicked a little bit. So I'm a I'm a big fan so far, and of course you could like get it on your computer with Blue Stacks, but I'm trying to I'm doing this on my phone because I kind of like the idea of a. I mean, I, I work on my computer. I game on my computer. Having you know a, a game I play on my computer have a version of that on my phone that I could play like on my bed, on my couch, on the toilet is kind of like when I want to scratch the itch, but I don't want to like boot up the computer, log into fucking destiny, you know, get wrapped up in a whole thing. Yeah. Listen, if, if, if we can, if we can enter the era where mobile games are properly crossing, crossing the threshold to handheld gaming, then, you know, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'd say the graphics for Destiny Rising on my phone, which is, like, pretty fucking new. Um, I'm sure it's probably better on um, Apple because I think their phones are probably a bit more powerful. Um, sure. But, I mean, on my Samsung S24+, Plus, it runs like a dream, and it looks pretty close to Destiny 1 graphics, which, like, 2014 PS4 is a pretty good um, graphical range. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... I feel like the PS4 was sort of like the... Okay, we can stop, like, really improving. <laughs> it it was the... Yeah, it, it was kind of the... Okay, here's our limit. Let's just do what little refinements we can. We're not trying to reinvent the... Exactly. It's why I don't feel the need to buy a PS5, because I'm like, the PS4 is pretty much so good. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you don't need it. Um. Yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, I'm going to keep playing it. I'm going to report back... Uh. I have still been watching the penguin, but uh, I think Joe is also now watching it. So maybe I'll wait to do a big uh, thing with maybe you and Joe, or just Joe, when it's done. There we go. But it's good. I'm perpetually one week behind. <laughs> I typically watch it on like Wednesdays or something. Oh, okay. It's bad. You. I'm very, very out of the loop. I also finally watched. Uh, I think I'm not done with Dynamite yet because it's <laughs> came out like six days ago. I'm still have to finish Dynamite. Oh shit! It's been bad. I've been bad about it. Um, but Nathan, the last thing I want to talk about to you is that I want to. This is a Rebel Moon thing. <laughs> oh shit! I went to a box lunch at the ball the other day. Yes. And I saw that they had in their discount bin. It was a fucking big bowl of Rebel Moon pin, like uh, backpack clip figures. Yeah. Or it's like a gotcha blind bag where you can get one of several characters in this bag. Yeah, yeah. And they had buy one, get two free. So I bought, so I got three. And then I was like, you know, I could just buy all of them. Yeah. And I mean, then I went is. back the next day and I grabbed the bowl and I was like, can I buy all of these? Oh, and then God. the cashier was like, I don't see why not. <laughs> She was like, you know, that's Rebel Moon, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told I told them I was like, I'm just here to help you clean out your stock. <laughs> um, I have the receipt. Hold on. Let me un unravel my uh, my my scroll. I got okay, 27 yeah. figures, so technically 30 in all. If I think about it. Okay. Okay. Um, does it tell me how much I saved? Okay. So I spent. $39 even because I rounded up for uh, charity. Of course. And I saved $99.82. <laughs> oh, and I think I used like a $10 off thing because I have like a, a savings thing. Okay, okay. But yeah, I got 27 Rebel Moon clip figures. So, so have you opened them all? Do you have the complete set? I have not opened them yet, so I want to ask you a question. Oh, shit. Should we do a special escape? Whoa, sorry. Shuttle cast. I transported myself back in time for a moment. You, d you did. I, I didn't mean to say that. I'm so sorry. A special, Don't say it. Don't think it. <laughs> a special shuttle cast presentation where we yap, but I open Rebel Moon figures the whole time. We talk about Rebel Moon, and I don't know. <laughs> We can do a whole thing about it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Have fun. a have a buddy for it. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Maybe if anybody wants us to be live, we could do that too. Have a live Rebel Moon discussion while I open up figures. Yeah. Uh, let us know. 
I got this bag of 27 <laughs> figures next to my desk just waiting for the lucky day. Jesus Christ. I know. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what to do with them. I'm pretty sure all the duplicates I get, I'll just give to you because you're the only other Rebel Moon person in the fucking state. Yep. 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 That 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 sounds right. I'll I'll put them all in my my Rebel Moon popcorn bowl. Yes. Oh, that's perfect. Away. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with mine. I joked about like buying a jar and putting all the figures in it, and then filling the jar up with like goo or whatever, and having them like f- fossilized. There you go. Yeah, just preserve them in a resin. Yes. Go. Have them perfectly like on the outside. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, dude. I I was this was a I think this was no this was the day where I um I couldn't get my Batman comic, so I think I uh I retail therapied um and bought twenty seven year old moon figures and then was like I can go to the other comic book shop actually. <laughs> <laughs> and spend well, so that's that's the power of, of retail therapy. Is you know, once once you spend a little bit, then you get the clarity of mind of, of what to do to get you out of your real funk it's true i was like oh god i don't know i gotta go buy 27 rebel moon figures and i was like oh wait a minute i can walk 15 minutes to the other comic shop i never go to stupid (laughs) well while i'm at it i can buy more things that's you know that's the that that is the retail therapy way it's the circle of life and then i got a new phone (laughs) and then you got a new phone we're doing good we're doing the lord's work here it's it's true. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the Shuttlecast. I'm sure when you listen to this, there'll be a new um, president. We don't know who because we're we've been talking about. Um, oh shit! Yeah, Jacob Elordi. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, whatever the outcome is, I hope you take some. This is your little safe haven from the world. I yeah. hope you see all this in your sub box, and you're like, God, they're talking about the exorcism. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, is, is that the baby man from Freaks in the thumbnail? Let's go. That's... <laughs> what is that low quality JPEG? Did they watch it? <laughs> I I couldn't I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really bad. If you watch the video, you'll see the, the, the struggle I had with it. It was it was like it was fucking pixels, bro. It was so it was like I can't I'll have to check it out. I can't in good conscious. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for listening to the Shuttle Pod cast. Yeah. Uh go read Superman, I don't know. Do it. Do it. Kill her.